I want to begin today by discussing a few matters, largely the state of the economy, and secondly, to look at the issues related to our recovery efforts since these two dangerous hurricanes would have impacted upon us. Yesterday, we held a consultation on the economy at the Ocean Terrace Inn, and I want to thank the representatives of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, the religious community, the disabled community, the credit union movement, the Bankers Association, and all the officials of Cabinet and the extended government for their participation. I felt especially pleased yesterday to report that our economy experienced three consecutive years of economic growth under the Team Unity Administration, a significant growth in per capita national income, putting us as number one in the OECS and number two in CARICOM after Bahamas. We have over the same period witnessed growth in recurrent taxes signaling the good health of our economy and inflation has been negligible. Indeed, inflation up to September 2017 was reported at a mere 1.5 percent. The prospects for 2018 are for further economic growth. Should this be realized, this will mean that for four years in a row, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 18, St. Kitts and Nevis would have recorded positive economic growth. In the last term of the former regime, economic growth was negative in 2010, negative in 2011, a negative in 2012. Indeed, for the entire five-year period, 2010 to 2014, the economic growth rate averaged a mere 1.43%. Our fiscal scorecard is an enviable one. <coughs> Surplus and recurrent account, overall account, and primary account. No other country in the region and indeed few, if any, other country in the world can boast of a superior economic and fiscal scorecard <coughs> over such a consecutive period. It is to this fiscal scorecard, as at September 2017, that I now turn. Despite the fallout from the hurricanes, the fiscal and economic scorecard continues its positive path though not at the same pace. The Office of the Financial Secretary and indeed the Deputy Financial Secretary with responsibility for fiscal affairs has reported that we continue our trend of surpluses on the following fiscal accounts. The recurrent account up to the 30th September that was doing 40.2% better than the budget for 2017 Overall balance was up over the budget for 2017, and our primary balance recorded a surplus of some 331% relative to the budget. Our projection for economic growth in 2018 is that it will continue to be positive, and we base that on the following emerging reality is we are witnessing now and it is projected to continue significant increases in our crew's arrivals. Indeed, there will be a record number of ships and some of the days in December and that positive story will continue into 2018. Indeed, the projections are that 2017 to 2018 will be the best year for cruise tourism. We will witness growth on account of the positive impact 
of the new, latest, unique St. Kitts Nevis Park Hyatt Luxury Hotel. Indeed, their own bookings for December, they have reported, are outstanding. The National Housing Corporation Housing Program will be given new pace and life in 2018, which means more housing solutions. We also expect to see expanded activity in our first time homeowners assistance program. This is a program by which the government accords concessions to homeowners building for the first time and materials value up to $400,000. Above that $400,000, then the duty and the other taxes waive would be payable. We expect to see the reconstruction work at the Old Road Fisheries Complex started and completed. Of course, the positive impact would be on our food security as the fishers would have more comfortable environments in which to ply their trade. We are expecting to see increased private sector lending as a result of a fresh tranche which will be provided in the Fresh Start program in 2018. This is based on the fact that so far the program has been oversubscribed and this government takes pride in knowing that the largest sum ever in the history of our country to be committed to the small and medium-sized enterprises was in fact committed by this administration. We will see next year the island main road start its resurfacing the length and breadth of the country in a phase where. And then we expect multiple other public sector capital projects, including the old road bay development. This is separate and distinct from the works that will be done and the old road fisheries complex. This of course will deal with the enlargement and the improved safety of the old road bay that time after time become disrupted once there is a hurricane. This solution has defied administration before us, but this is a team unity administration. We deal with the problems. And so once and for all we begin what will be an enduring solution to the problem at Old Road Bay. We have further good news. We will start next year Indeed, the Minister of Public Infrastructure tells me that some preparatory work has already started for the East Bus Terminal at Wellington Road. So there is significant activity from the public sector. And indeed, you would note that I've omitted a major one, the second cruise pair. And it could go on and on. Additional infrastructural works as the RLB, Rattray Airport, all those matters, of course, are going to impact significantly on construction, on earnings, and the quality of life of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. I am happy to report that with respect to our recovery efforts, significant works have already commenced. Indeed, at this point in time, the hurricane season, we will note, is not yet ended. It's nearing the end, but I'm sure this hurricane season will be long be remembered, not just in St. Kitts and Nevis and the Caribbean region, but around the world, because it has recorded more instances of realized hurricane than had ever been witnessed. And the severity <coughs> of these hurricanes are first time in the history. We had the um, the chance to participate in a UN CARICOM pledging conference which took place on the 20th and the 21st of November at the UN headquarters at the United Nations. That conference proceedings resulted in pledges of over one billion US dollars. A significant proportion, almost half of that was pledged by the government of Netherlands, 
in support of the Dutch territories impacted by the hurricane. St. Kitts and Nevis is pleased to have shown solidarity and offered support to our region at a crucial time of need, even as we too grapple with the cost of reconstruction of our infrastructure and making them more resilient. It is a matter of note that we have given millions to our neighbors to assist them in their recovery. It is a matter of note that we have opened our institutions of learning to over 79 students impacted by hurricane and displaced from Anguilla, St. Martin, Dominica, and elsewhere. And speaking of Dominica, we are in fact happy to have been able to provide a temporary respite, respite for the students at the Ross University there who had become inconvenienced as a result of the impact of Maria and that country. Of course, we will always be a partner with Ross in the efforts at the development. Turning more specifically to some of the areas in which there has been significant damage and to report what has been done. The Frigate Bay Development Corporation, so I'm under the rubric of national security. The police station is housed in that complex on the ground floor and damage to that structure has led to the displacement of our police from that particular outpost. Given the importance of safety and security, in our major touristic hub, this government is undertaking the cost of repairs to that facility. The Public Works has, in fact, already awarded a contract to effect the necessary works. And the cost of these repairs, the cost has been put at about 350000 Additional costs of furniture and fittings, electricals, etc., destroyed by the battering of the wind and rain have not yet been fully determined. Nonetheless, and thankfully, we have been advised that there is a commitment from a private sector partner to assist the police in their retrofitting exercise once the roof is solidly and securely on. So we want to say thank you to that particular partner. In the meantime, we must express, express our appreciation to another private party for loaning its facility for the temporary accommodation of the police at the Frigate Bay. So we have two good summer, summer <laughs> yes, <laughs> at this particular time. One who has committed once the original facility has been repaired they will deal with the retrofitting. They will do all that is necessary to make it fit for purpose, and the other who, in the interim, is undertaking to provide temporary accommodation to our police. The police training school also suffered damage at Pons Pasture, and that damage has been put at $232,611 already because of the priority we give to security and public safety a contractor has been assigned by the public works i turn to the ministry of education that ministry suffered significant damage and so far the ministry of finance working with that ministry has committed 1.2 million for post-hurricane repairs in our educational institutions from early childhood to secondary school. The most significant cost is at the Washington Archibald High School, where over half a million dollars in repair works are being undertaken. Indeed, this cost would have been higher to the public purse had not the Public Works Department undertaken to do that. So we have had a saving and the labor component of that particular works. We also committed to repairs 
to the roof, the ceiling, and electrical network at the school. Funds have also been committed to the repair efforts at our institutions of learning in Deep Bay and Sadler's, among others. I want to reflect on the progress in the agricultural sector. I think last time I reported that we had made a special allocation of over $300,000 available to the ministry to deal with some significant damage to that sector and to assist the farmers in getting back and fishers in getting on their feet again. It has been reported by the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Edwards, that of 102 crop farmers who qualify for relief, 57 have already collected all or some of the materials and services available to them, while 22 of the 33 livestock farmers have already received support. So there has been a good response in relation to this measure. The beneficiaries are allowed to select from the range of services and sale items offered by the department. Additionally, the department has purchased building materials, particularly lumber and galvan galvanized from hardware stores to distribute to livestock farmers whose holdings were damaged and in many cases rendered useless. The crop farmer assistance took the form of the important land preparation services, feed, seeds, chemical, plastic mulch, and fencing wire. The other major areas of concern reported post hurricane had to do with feeder roads and access thereto. Many of them had been heavily eroded and made impassable by fallen trees and debris. These, of course, in order to expedite action in these, the department took the decision to use private contractors, giving other people then an opportunity to earn while we enhance the delivery to the farming community. So far, the road restoration program is going apace and over $34,000 have been expended there. To hardware is over 75,000 and from the department itself, about 75,000 have been spent. The additional funds will be dispersed according to needs as the farmers come forward with their justifiable claims. Turning to the housing sector, and this sector experienced significant damage, and for many members of household, it was a period of significant inconvenience and challenge. As a compassionate government, we responded, and we responded by providing duty-free and tax concessions and building materials. So far, over 110 persons have applied for duty-free assistance and materials to effect the necessary repairs to their residential properties damaged by hurricanes Irma and Maria. 93 of these applications have been approved so far. 18 are subject to review for their relationship to the hurricanes. 11 are out in the field, that is the inspectors are going out to do the assessment of the damage that has been presented. Materials for which duty fee concessions have already been granted to date value $1.1 million. So we have had significant support in that particular category. The old road bed, the disruption of this major road network was quickly corrected on a temporary basis thanks to the coastal engineer. And in my opening remark, I indicated that we will rebuild this, making it more resilient. And there is a significant cost attending to that of over $20 million. This work will be started in 2018. We already are at an advanced stage in terms of the design. 
while further works are being undertaken, we are confident that the range that has been provided, the final product will come within that. At the Old Road Fisheries Complex, the reconstruction cost there has been put at $5.5 million. Again, for this facility, we expect work to start and to be completed in 2018. In the health sector, the Joseph and France Hospital, we have started significant repairs and renovation work there made necessary as a consequence of the deterioration of the facility as a result of the hurricanes. Indeed, when we inherited government, the Drenef physical plant needed a good looking over and overhaul. The passage of the hurricanes would, of course, complicate it and worsen matters there. I'm pleased to report that over the next four or so months, Evelyn's construction will be undertaking those repairs to the satisfaction, I hope, of all the health workers, the patients, and anyone who has reason to use the facility at the JNF Hospital. The contract awarded to Evelyn Construction to date stands in the region of about $1.5 million. So we are having some significant sums. We have been the only government to have applauded and incentivized the action, positive action, of many public servants in the lead up and immediacy of the hurricanes that have passed. We recognize those who went beyond the call of duty and we committed that we will pay by the end of the hurricane season overtime work and an honorarium in some exceptional cases for those who had gone beyond the call of duty. It is the decent thing to do. And so the government went through with the commitment Payments to date for the public infrastructure workers total over $90,000. For those in the health and for health so far, the payments are to the institutional base workers and that is over $43,000. Agricultural sector, you have recognized in the previous reflections and that particular sector over $184,000 have been committed. National security, our police, our defense force, our fire and rescue, and NEMA, they were rewarded to the tune of 549000 for a total payment to date of the end of November of $867,506. Eight six seven five zero six point five eight. Some late claims are being processed and reconciled. Late submissions have come in from National Security for an additional two hundred and sixty two thousand five hundred and sixty dollars. I guess the Deputy Commissioner will have something to say about this. When eventually positively determined, overtime payments introduced for the first time for an expanded group of government employees who work in the hurricanes will surpass $1.25 million. I want to thank all the government employees again for their good response during the hurricanes and in the period immediately thereafter. Of course, we had some excellent display of citizenship coming from the NEMA office, including those who are in special call, the NEOC, I think they are referred to. We have had that good response from the fire, from the police, indeed all the agencies of law and order. I also want to hail and commend the efforts of our Red Cross and that band of patriotic volunteers who helped us move very quickly with our hurricanes. 
We had special support from St. Lucia with a group of electrical um, professionals and workers who had come in to help us, and we want to place and record our gratitude for their help in helping us to have um, a more timely restoration of electricity in our country. Our parliament will meet again. This will be about our ninth meeting for the year. The parliament will meet on Wednesday the 6th December 2017, at which time the draft estimates for 2018 will be laid and the appropriation bill for 2018 will be debated. In keeping with our track record, we are expecting, and we will know for certain on the 6th of December, since we have not yet finalized, the historic budget will be tax-free, notwithstanding the damage and the provision in the budget for the reconstruction works and several of the sectors impacted, such as the Old Road Bay product project, the fisheries project, the resurfing of our island main road, that too has been provided, although not necessarily a direct consequence of the hurricanes. We would have done it anyway, according to plan. The budget will reflect mobilization work for the Bastia High School, and so on and so on and support indeed for the vulnerable communities. So the tomorrow for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis will be much better than today. We want to give God thanks that we have weathered two dangerous storms and we are still standing. The fiscal situation is in incredible good health and the economy is moving in the right direction. For the record, there has been no other time in the history of government where so much good is being done for so many people. The fiscals, I gave the record of what was to what is the first three years of the last administration, marred by deficit and negative growth. The first three of this administration being, of course, marked by high growth rates and also by significantly positive news on the fiscal front. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter and watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.